How do we service the warfighter needs in the test and development environment? One of the strengths, obviously, of the American warfighter is, that our, is our ability to rapidly make decisions. And I characterize it now as how do we do development within the decision-making cycle? One of those problems that we have as an organization is that we've got to be able to develop software and field it very, very rapidly in support of ongoing and emerging needs. General Sorensen, the, the Army CIO, has this wonderful vignette of what really we're trying to tra tackle as that problem set. It's when it, an American soldier, and in this case he had um, some reservists who were mobilized and they were brought into um, active duty, brought into theater, and they had to develop a convoy control piece of software. It took him six months to provision the servers, a few months to write the code, and another six months to go through the accreditation process. I think we all recognize that that's fundamentally an, an error. There's a process problem. And I think this is the group and, this, the, and, and all of the other partners that we're working with. We're able to go there and try to solve that type of problem so that we can develop, deploy, develop, accredit, deploy software immediately to su support warfighter needs. So last October, we started this process. We launched the first piece of race, and we, you heard some of the initial announcements. And then last week, we took it to the next step. And we are, we're allowing users to self-service provision right now um, inside the, the secured DEX, the Defense Enterprise Computing Centers. Um, additionally, we also took a look at the accreditation process. I think we all recognize that the accreditation process, the die cap, the DITS cap, whatever process it was, was an exceptionally long amount of time. I mean, we were averaging 80 to 90 days to be able to get a process, a, a stream, uh, to, to get the software through the accreditation process. By doing some of the, the initial pieces of the streamlining, last week we were able to drop that down to about 40 with some very aggressive targets that I will not publicly say, um, uh, but in the near future to drop that even further. Admittedly, that is in a very, very standardized, um, hyper standardized in operational environment. You'll have to develop in the race environment. You'll have to go through the die cap process. You'll have to use some of the job aids we're creating, the templating that we're, gonna, we're in the middle of creating to bring it through, and then we'll be able to drop it into that exact same highly standardized environment in the production environment. Um, right now, um, the race environment is available on the Nippernet. It is available today for people to use and, and actually provision their own software. I'm sorry, provision their own operating systems. Um, it takes 72 hours, and that's because we're still working through a lot of the other security issues. But dropping it from six months to seven, uh, six months originally, 30 days using some of our capacity services contracts, and then now shifting that to 72 hours is just some monumental changes in the way that we're going to be able to deliver services out to the American warfighter. When we look at what cloud computing is, and this change in the architecture, the, the change in the, the methodology, the acquiring things as a service, um, allowing your users to pay for it as a service, uh, delivering everything across an IP stack, and some of the tech technical changes, um, you notice that three of the four are really cultural in nature. We've got a journey to go through on this. It's that journey of trying to figure out how we as, as providers of these IT resources, how are we able to go there and allow organizations to acquire things as services. We don't want them to acquire it as a box. Um, we don't want them to hug their little server that's sitting underneath their desk. We would rather securely, safely, in a nice facility uh, and a server that's able to be technology refreshed on a regular basis. A, 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 a server that's actually virtualized. Um, a server that eventually be, will be able to be virtualized and sh data shared across the entire complex, not just one rack, not just one data center, but in, across the entire enterprise. So if you understand that piece, and you, you'll know where we're trying to go, is how do we do this massive amount of hyper-virtualization um, and hyper-connected um, data centers as we're looking at these data centers of the future? 